This is my last video. No more Sin Sven and no more Minecraft after that. To explain how it got this far, I have to tell you a story. A rather epic story, and it's one filled with friendship, but also hatred. Big projects and abandoned projects. Dreams and also a lot of crushed hope. It's a story of a Minecraft prison, but it is not a very simple or ordinary one. One so big that most servers cannot even run it. With a block count of 12.5 billion blocks it is by far the biggest minecraft prison ever made and possibly even the biggest redstone machine ever made in this video i will cover how this project came to be why it was abandoned and what made me make the decision of abandoning my channel let's start at the beginning before the first block was even placed at the start of February 2021, I was on the bus and I was really bored. I watched this video right here and it was on the security measurements that are implemented in Pandora's world and I couldn't help but wonder if I could do that better. Could I build a prison better than what I saw right here? I was sure I could do better and I was adamant on proving it, so I began constructing my very own prison. At the time, this channel wasn't really doing good. like. It was basically dead. With this situation in mind and having spent two weeks on a Minecraft prison I was sure nobody would even be interested in, I just hoped that this video would take off. But it didn't. It just got 1000 views. And then 2000. 5000. 10,000. 20,000. 50,000. 500,000. And then it just kept growing and growing and in the end, I, I accumulated over 8 million views on this video. Surprisingly, this video seemed to have sparked a rather simple question in the mind of my viewers. Is it possible to trap someone in Minecraft without cheats, with absolutely no chance of escape? I didn't know it yet, but it turned out that this simple question would turn out to be one of the hardest questions to answer in Minecraft history. And thus, the Minecraft prison community was born. And this is where our story begins, with Xenos. Xenos is the man who would later become the founder of Neon Void, and he had one simple but big dream. After watching my Poseidon Vault video, he too had the feeling that he could do better. Way better to be exact. He wanted to be the one to make the absolutely perfect prison. I had the same dream as him, but I can confidently say that I wasn't as adamant on achieving it as he was. At the time, Xenos was still playing on the Bedrock edition of Minecraft, but that didn't stop him from having a full-out rivalry with another person called Steve New. These two wanted to see who could build the better prison, and they challenged themselves all the time. Remember this guy? He will come back later. They just had a little back and forth debating on who could build the better prison. They prototyped, they experimented, they talked, they researched, they did everything they could to improve the prison building. But nonetheless, they never really released any official prison that you could look at today. He built new concepts, built old ones even better, improved old tech, invented new tech. He just did all sorts of things to try and get better at prison building. Then after my first prison, to be honest, proved to be a total joke and was totally escapable, uh, I built my second one, which also got validly escaped after a few days, which was pretty embarrassing. After this huge L, I gathered more people, four to be exact, and together we built uh, this thing in two months. And it was an incredible amount of work. And it actually did pretty well at first, but it got escaped as well. Each prison was stronger than the one before, and the community just began to pump out very respectable prisons. To name a few, let me let me read that. Uh, to name a few, the Fortress, the Obelisk, Titan's Vault, Aries Vault, Ilios Citadel, Banker's Vault, Mangrove's Eye, and the guard would be watching Bolt. <laughs> anyway, on the 24th of November, Xenos messaged a guy called Actually Coke, showing him a new prison design he made. Keep in mind, this is actually the first time he contacted someone from the prison community, despite having developed and built many many prison related stuff in the past months. Having spent only 50 hours on this build, it was pretty clear that Xenos was not a noob and knew what he was doing when it comes to prison building. After a literal redstone building standoff, I'm not kidding here, these two decided to join forces and worked on designs and concepts together. Xenos' real life friend joined and was mostly responsible for the exterior of the prison. Now, finally, after almost a year of being in this community, those three developed and published their first proper prison called the Cyclonic Convolt. Remember Steve New? Xenos' rival? Yeah, apparently the Cyclonic Convolt was just published and even 
published earlier than expected, just to rival his prison called the Asylum. This rushed version of the Cyclonic Convolve was made in a hurry and never really released properly or publicly, so there's no world download available. Nunes, who was responsible for the outside of the prison, developed this iconic arc and remember its shape and how it looks because it will pop up later in the video. Although, according to Xenos, his prison was better than Steve's prison, the rivalry just stopped after that. But Xenos still wasn't satisfied. He wanted to go bigger, he wanted to build something that is truly unmatched. So, after recruiting Def0910, who by the way originally worked for Steve, which is pretty funny, these four tried to develop a new prison. And this prototype was the first version of Neon Void, the prison that would become the biggest and most advanced prison in history. This is where the insane dedication that is needed for this project slowly becomes clear. You see, most normal prisons have one prototype and that gets developed into the main prison. Neon Void had four and each time they started a new prototype they had to start completely from scratch and each time it got bigger and bigger. So let's start with version 1. The development started February 12, 2022 and was a whopping 1500 by 1500 blocks wide. By then it was already the biggest prison ever made, but that quickly changed when at the end of February Canadian uploaded a video called Daedalus Labyrinth, a new prison he made. Canadian was a relatively small YouTuber back then who released three prisons in total and was both proficient in prison escapes and prison building. So this begs the question, what was so special about this thing that the whole team decided it was better to abandon version 1 and start anew? I'll link the original video where everything is better explained um, in the description, but basically what they did as Labyrinth allowed the prisoner to do was have and obtain pretty much every single item in the game, with just a few exceptions. On top of that, it was also able to hold hundreds of prisoners at the same time. Truly revolutionary back then. This required Daedalus Labyrinth to be really, really big though, so the Neon Boy team decided to abandon the version and start anew, to make a bigger and better project. Version 2 was where everything got more impressive and just unbelievably big. It was about 2700 by 2700 blocks wide, but was still on the bedrock edition of Minecraft. Nothing too exciting happened during that time, but that quickly changed when a player named Zeo Knight came along. He convinced the entire team to switch to Java, which does not seem like a big deal, but this requires starting all over again, as you can't really convert worlds between Java and Bedrock. The only problem was that no one really had a server that was able to host a 3000 by 3000 big redstone machine and was able to smoothly run it. Except for Zeo Knight. This man convinced an entire team to abandon the project, start a new, switch versions and even provided a 5GB RAM server for them. What a legend. Like, be real here. So, on to version 3. This version of the prison is in 1.17.1, but along with the version change, they also had other advantages. For example, less lag, better plugins, better world that builders could join with both Java and Bedrock versions of the game, and it eliminated major player lag that occurred because of the many observers used. At least that's what I wrote down, so it's probably true. They built the whole prison again. Everything from scratch. They started from zero. They built everything they have built before and even more and it was still in vain. Not long after, a player named Hi there would disclose to them a discovery that would lead to the abandonment of version 3. It is simply called death detection, a technique that uses skull catalysts to detect when someone dies. Something that sounds insignificant, but proved to change the respawn system so fundamentally that a new version of the prison had to be started. Finally, we're at the last stage of Neon Void, version 4. The project was going to be in the Minecraft version 1.19, which means that the build limit is now way higher. The team also now had access to a lot of new blocks, like the aforementioned Skull Catalyst. An unimaginably big size of 4700 blocks by 4700 blocks already made it the biggest prison to have ever existed. With a biome exterior of 7000 by 7000 and with the outer wasteland included 22000 by 22000, it is even one of the biggest builds ever built in Minecraft. Over time, more and more people joined, and I can't name all of them because more than 100 people worked on this project. But to name a few, Architect MC joined and he did the majority of the exterior, which is a huge task, so hats off to him. Exterior is a 
pretty rough job I can say. And also a player named Alter C joined and he was responsible for data packs and plugins which proved to be very helpful for building because it sped up the building process according to Xenos by a hundred times. And I can imagine building a hundred times faster is pretty useful when you try to build the prison that big. This was also the time I was invited into this project. I was pretty reluctant at first um, because of reasons disclosed later in this video but I eventually agreed. I haven't uploaded in a full year, but this project was pretty much everything I dreamt about when I was still building prisons. The dream of achieving the impossible, of actually entrapping someone with 100% guarantee that they're gonna stay there without using cheats. Looking at images like this, I already knew I was of no help to the redstoners and the actual brains and minds behind the prison. This is way out of my league, so I decided to help on the exterior. I am uh, pretty ashamed to admit that this is literally the only thing I built um, on the exterior of the prison, which is not much. It took me like a few hours, so sorry guys. Uh, in the end of the video I explain why this happened, so go watch that after this part. I never really saw it as my prison, even though I upload it on this channel now. I was basically there to spectate the project, maybe boost morale in some, and then in the end document the project. Oh, now we get to the drama, let's go. So, all of these workers and all of these countless hours put into one single project of course attracted some judging eyes. Some people thought the project was unnecessarily big and complicated and a simpler prison would do just fine. Others really liked the idea of big prisons and complicated mechanics and complicated structures of prisons. So, as a cause of this, the Once United community actually split in two. I'm not kidding, there were like two sides of, of people in the same community arguing over what type of prison is the better one. And all of these people eventually got trapped in a seemingly everlasting echo chamber of hate and accusing the other side of building the worst prisons and it was just a huge mess. Xenos was adamant that his way of building prisons was just fine, but Canadian and some other people just disagreed. The following drama and fight involved wild accusations, sabotages, espionage and I'm not even kidding here, there was someone posing as someone else to spy on the other side and just a lot of misunderstanding for other people's opinions. This drama took way too long, was way too multifaceted for me to understand and had too many twists for me to explain here. If you want to know what happened in detail, head over to Canadian's video, it is really good and it's worth watching and it is linked in the description, he just sums up the whole situation masterfully. So the team carried on, even through tough times and hate comments from people who did not really understand their vision and dream. But what made them persist? What was the big idea behind version 4? Why would version 4 last so much longer than the other versions? And this is where we start to talk about the features of Neon Void and this is where it gets honestly pretty insane. First of all the switch to 1.19 caused the range of area bands to be changed from cubicle to spherical. The original plan was to surround the whole prison with area bands and have the logic circuit in the middle. Oh, and of course it should look cool too. But that is not that different from all the prisons like Guy's Vault, so why even bother with that idea? You see, they didn't use area bands, they used memory bands, and these two are fundamentally different. Area bands just kick everyone who's near them off the server, but memory bands, they crash the whole server if you get near them. This happens because the limited memory of the server gets overloaded with too much information which it can't handle, so the server crashes. This was truly revolutionary, as it meant you could no longer destroy the prison with withers, because in order to get a wither near the prison, you would have to load that part of the prison to get the wither near it, but you can't load the prison because the server would crash. Putting these memory bands in the 1500 block thick walls also meant that you can no longer ender pearl, ender pearl cannon or fly over it or any other tactics. Almost every tactic to get over the walls is basically prevented by that. According to Xenos, unless Microsoft changes how they load items inside of containers in Minecraft, this bug or glitch will not be fixed in the near future. This is also the reason why he decided to not make it public, because just imagine what would happen if every idiot would know how to crash any server at any time using just a few chests. It's pretty bad. 
Although some people doubt that this technology even exists, I've seen it myself and I can say it does. Here's the kicker, memory bands have been known to exist for over a year before they were even implemented into Neon Void. But they were used in the project um, with WISP and this project was discontinued and so this knowledge was just lost in time. But with extensive testing, Xenos actually managed to rediscover this technology and found three methods to pull them off. Due to one of those three methods being quite experimental and not really reliable and the topic in general being a really hot one, there was a lot of drama surrounding memory bands and it was again just really complicated. For more information, again head over to Canadian's video after watching this one, he covers this in way more detail than I do here. So back to the features, do you remember this logic circuit I talked about at the beginning of this section? It features a 10 tier alarm system which automatically detects how big the issue is and then decides automatically how to act upon it. If the issue is small, the alarm system will just ban the chunk in which the error is in, but if there's a really devastating security breach, it will permanently and irreversibly crash the whole server for good. This is called the bye bye lever. Neon is way too complex for me to understand, yet to explain. There are so many features and so many security measurements, you just can't go over them all. Not many videos exist, but if there are videos that explain um, how Neon works and stuff like that, I will link them also down in the description. Let's talk about the cells. Neon Void features four different giant cells, which can house up to 800 to 900 different people in total, and also give access to pretty much every single item in the game, again, with just a few exceptions. Insane technology just kept getting found day by day and it got improved and improved and improved and this whole project just became everything I ever dreamt about and it was amazing. I always love the idea to test how far you can push the most fundamental mechanics of Minecraft. What can you achieve with just the right combination of blocks and the right combination of glitches and exploits? What is possible? Neon got so big that people started implementing their own ideas into the project, no matter how really useful they were. An auditorium with a working display, several meeting rooms, automated storage rooms, personalized guard rooms, a theater, mini versions of every single prison that has ever been released, statues of all the helpers, and they even built the f***ing back rooms in there. The sheer size and absurdity of this obsidian block meant that you could build whatever you want within those walls without actually disrupting the functionality of the prison. Everything was fine, everyone had fun, and they were about 80% done. And then, disaster struck. On the 13th of March 2022, over a year after the project had begun, Neon Void was announced to be cancelled. But why? Everything was going well, right? Well, not really. A glitch called Tile Tick Suppression was found, which caused the progress to drop from 80% done to 30% done. This glitch works by slowing down item bans, which resulted in the team having to redo the entire ban system. This required the manual rewiring of 1250 redstone lines. And I'm not talking like 10 block long redstone lines. Remember, this is the biggest prison in existence, so one single redstone line can span up to a few thousand blocks. And all of them had to be rewired by hand manually. With this gigantic dent in progress and a few personal problems with some of the members, the project and all of its workers became more and more inactive. The builders and even Xenos, the man with the unshaken dream of building the most inescapable and monumental prison in history, slowly lost the motivation to carry on. And who could really blame them? Having worked for over a year, several hours a day, with a team of in total over 100 people, only to discover that they barely made a dent in the work that is yet to be done. After many hesitant votes and many tries to revive the passion that was once there, the project was announced to be cancelled for good. My dream, Xenos' dream and many other people's dream that seemed to be so reachable just moments ago, completely shattered. Unfortunately, this story has no happy ending. Neon Void will never ever be finished and this is it. But heads up, there is a way how you can look at the prison and at the map at its current state by just going to this server IP from my good friend Mining Blob, um, where you can actually even go into creative and spectator mode and just fly around the prison and explore. And you will never run out of things to discover, I promise. 
Mining Blob server is hosted by WebWorld Hosting, which took over the duty of hosting once Zeonite server was no longer available. With the code NEODEV you can get up to 20% off your next server, and I can only recommend it. For example, during development these guys provided us with a server with 22GB of RAM and the best processor at the time. To compare, Zeonite server had 5GB of RAM. So, after the cancellation, I asked Xenos if he thinks that an inescapable prison is still possible. And his response was rather disheartening. According to him, escape technology is getting so advanced and so hard to fix, with new discoveries being made all the time, that it's just not really worth it to build a prison anymore. Even if you somehow manage to fix every single escape method known today, there will always be a new method being discovered in a month or so that will make your whole prison redundant. Sadly, prison building technology just kinda lags behind. Some escape methods sound totally made up, but are actually real and are very hard to fix. Okay, I gotta read off my notes again, but for example, tactics like chunk skipping, light suppression, stasis chambers, warp arrows, the trident method and cross server teleportation are just a few examples of things that prison builders have to account for. With this being my last video, I just want to say one last thing about Neon Void. Some saw me as the founding father of the prison community. Personally, I never asked for that role, and I never intended for a community to get together and try to inspire each other. But in my humble opinion, this does not take away from its beauty. Yes, the trend is dead, and yes, the perfect prison might not be possible after all. But I mean, just imagine what would have happened if none of you guys were inspired by my silly little redstone prison that I only built because I'm a know-it-all and I wanted to one-up awesome dude. Not a single revolutionary breakthrough in Minecraft technology. Not a whole new wave of aspiring and amazing content creators. No strangers on the internet uniting in countless projects with one single goal in mind. No loyal fans shooting me words of encouragement and love. I might not have built the best prison, and maybe Xenosis in my dream is not achievable after all. But I'm just glad I was on this journey together with you guys. And now, by sliding the cringe meter all the way to its maximum, I can confidently say that the treasure were the friends we made along the way. Hey, do you remember at the beginning of this video when I said, this is my last video, no more scenes spent and no more Minecraft after this? And actually, it's true. But don't worry, this won't be the end of me, just the end of this channel, so stick around to learn more. First of all, I feel like I owe you an apology, because I just disappeared without any explanation. I first stopped uploading when I was in a difficult phase in university, loads, loads of tests and loads of projects and um, I didn't really find the time. But after that, when I had time, I didn't really find motivation to record videos because somehow I didn't really enjoy Minecraft as much as I used to. Money was not really a motivator for me, at least not a big one, and YouTube was slowly becoming something that I hate. YouTube was my passion and I even chose my field of study because of that passion. I actually, right now I'm studying filmmaking and... But still, YouTube was something I resented more and more and I just didn't know why. I, I had to stop, take a break and, and think about it, let it sink in, but I just couldn't help but feel guilty. I, I had this childhood dream of being a YouTuber and I actually did it. How many people can say that they're a YouTuber? Oh, wait, let me, wait, 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 let me get this. Let me get this. How many people can say they have this? This, this makes me so proud, unbelievably proud. And, and, and still I didn't make use of it and, and that I just felt really guilty about that. I'm now 21 years old and I've been running this channel for over three years now. And I kind of found myself having new hobbies. I now live in a new apartment. I now study at a university. I got into self-improvement. I Like so many things changed, I, I changed as well. And I think this is one of the reasons why I slowly realized that I grew out of gaming a bit and I didn't enjoy it as much as I used to. Of course I still had my channel and I wanted to upload but there was still a lot of work to be done for university and I just couldn't muster up enough motivation to consistently work on it, which was a huge problem for me. 
But then I got the invitation to Neon and I was really reluctant at first because that would mean a commitment to the future of my channel, something that I was already very unsure about because I didn't even know what I wanted myself. But since it really was the embodiment of my dream I had with this one trend I started, this one thing I actually did and achieved on YouTube was this trend. And this project embodied the, the, the dream I had and I just, I just had to join. I, I, I had to give it a chance and I had to see where, where this project went. I didn't want to not be a part of it. I then found out uh, I still was not motivated enough, so even a project that is literally all I ever dreamed about is not enough to get me to work. As you can see, this is the only thing I ever build, which is not enough if you say I'm gonna help on the project. And um, yeah, this was where I definitely said, okay, yeah, Minecraft, it no longer. I don't want to do Minecraft no more. This, this does not work out. So this is what I did. This is not the last of me, so I've already created another channel. It is not about Minecraft or gaming at all, but in the essence of giving back to the community I love, high quality content and sharpening the skills I learn at university, I decided to make a video essay channel. I have not niched down yet and I will have to see what works and what doesn't, but I already have produced a video, so if you want to see how that might look or if you're interested in that video type at all, head over to my new channel. The link is the very, very first link in the description um, and also in the comments. Um, just head over there and go subscribe. But please only subscribe if you actually enjoy and plan on watching that content. It does not help me if you subscribe and never watch me at all. That might even be like bad for me. So only subscribe if you actually plan on watching and are interested in that kind of content. I also quickly want to say that I will read every, every single one of the comments on this video as it is my last one and it means the world to me. And in this spirit I also just want to say thank you real quick. You guys allowed me to have the most fun I've had in years, fulfill my childhood dream, get my own apartment and find my passion, which is not something easy to do. I cannot put in words how much I owe you and I'm adamant on at least trying to give that back. So go subscribe to the new channel where you can expect even better videos than on this channel and I will try to upload about once a month, hopefully. And now, for one last time, my outro sentence. This has been Sin Sven, and for the last three years, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for watching. Struggling, look at them go. People are struggling, no one has found it yet.